Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari and today is day one of the 12 days after Christmas. So what are the 12 days after Christmas, you ask? Well, I really like the idea of Vlogmas and the end of the year wrap-up stats videos, but I would like to actually get into the next year before doing my previous year's stat videos. I know a lot of YouTubers will consider December um, in next year's, but I want to keep it tidy, so we are going to do um, wrap-up videos and just basically 12 straight days of some sort of content on this channel. The wrap-up videos, if you're here specifically for that, won't come until January 1st. And there you go. The rest of it is going to be fun, but not wrap-up videos. So for the first day of the 12 days after Christmas, I am doing my favorite books of all time and this is going to be kind of a weird one because I'm very particular about what I consider a favorite book. For me, a favorite book has to be something that I've read multiple times and that I keep wanting to read, that I keep wanting to go back to it. And it takes years for a book to be like an all-time favorite. Like I kind of have a favorite of the year that I've read once and I really liked, but it takes a very, very, very long time for something to be like an all-time favorite and there's not very many of them. So I'm going to break this down into two parts. The first part is going to be like my actual favorites and then other books that have potential to get into my favorites of all time that I just need to reread two or three more times before they actually land there. Let's get into the actual books that are my all-time favorites. These are in no particular order except for my favorite book of all time. Like I know what my favorite book of all time is, but like the other other five on this stack, yes I only have six favorite books of all time, the other five on this stack I don't don't have a particular order for. So we're going to start off with The Elfstones of Shannara by Terry Brooks. This book is the second book in an original trilogy of like a book series. Like the Shannara series has like third, no, like nearly 50, I think books in the entire series. There's a lot of books in the Shannara series, um, but out of the original trilogy this was book number two. Now there's prequels in front of this and then like prequel series in front of the series and then a lot of continuation. There, there's a lot, but I love this book. And this book was made into a television show that I think lasted two seasons. It was like a teen television show. The show doesn't really follow the book that much, but I like the show too, if that says how much that I love just the story in this book. Now this is a story of a young half-elf named Will Almsford who has magic stones from his father. His father, which was the book before this, went on an adventure um, to help, help the um, elf king and came back like ruined. Like he was a drunk, a drug addict, a magic addict, and Will watched his father kind of like fall apart. And he was always told by his uncle that the magic was what like his experiences through the war and the magic kind of like tore his father apart so Will wants to be a healer and that's his ultimate goal in life is to be a healer but he gets swept up in um the uh in saving a ancient tree that belongs to the elves called the Elkris and um basically loses out on his chance to be a healer because he has to be a hero instead. 
and it's very typical fantasy. You've got elves, half-elves, druids, uh, demons are the bad guys in this book, things like that. It's very interesting. This one, you really can. Like, I read this before I read it in the other books. You can read this alone, but it is part of a series if you're um, more interested in the overall universe. You will see more of this book in um, another one of the videos that I'm doing during this 12 Days of Christmas. Um, so if you're interested in the idea of the Shannara series and haven't read it, check out those other videos. There will be more on Shannara. Next up in my favorites of all time is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I love this book. And it doesn't make any sense that I love this book because I don't like miscommunication tropes. Um, but Jane Austen just does it in like such a sarcastic way where like the reader knows that Darcy and Elizabeth are both idiots. <laughs> and that um, her pride and his prejudice are standing in the way of them having like a wonderful relationship that it just, it just makes me happy. I really like all of Jane Austen's books, but this one is, like, my favorite. Um, I assume you know what Pride and Prejudice is about. Most people do. But basically it is about um, the Bennet sisters in their household, where it's a household of, like, five? five? I think five. Five or six. But I think five sisters, where the two older, eldest sisters are very... Um, intelligent and fit into society well, and then the three youngest sisters and their mother are um, kind of like a joke of society. They're they're not very. They don't have a lot of propriety. Um, they make it idiots of themselves, and. Jane is considered extremely beautiful, and then Elizabeth is extremely intelligent. And this is from the perspective of Elizabeth. And as as the time goes, or as is normal in this time period, like all of these girls need to marry because once their father dies, they have no money. They're going to be poor, they're going to be out on the street. So they need to marry and they need to try to marry well. And it's just kind of like their day-to-day -day life adventures of them trying to get married um, with the two eldest doing a fairly decent job of it and then the youngest and their mother kind of ruining everything for everybody. Um, but yeah, I love this book. Great classic, great starter classic because it's fairly short. So if you're looking a place to start classics and you like romances or you like contemporary stories, I think you would like this one. Next up is a book called Silver Fall and it's the stories of the Seven Sisters um, by Ed Greenwood. Now this is a Forgotten Realms novel which is something that takes place in the D&D &D universe and this is a story about the Seven uh, sisters of Mistra, which they're not like blood related sisters, they're like the priest of the goddess of magic, or like the high priestesses, I guess. And they, you could tell that somebody is a high priestess of the goddess of magic because they've got um, white or silver hair. And it's basically like a fantasy mystery that each sister has to solve one step of the mystery and it like passes on from sister to sister um, trying to save magic or something like that. Um, it, it's kind of hard to say without spoiling what's going on. But uh, it's just, this is a book that I found when I was young and it was one of the first books that I read with an all female cast with empowering female characters. Like every main character in this book is a woman and every single woman is strong on her own. You've got characters who are like great mages but then some of them aren't like the best mages. Some of them are great fighters. 
um, dancers, singers, it, leaders, and for me this was probably one of the first books that I've ever read as a fantasy where I found empowering women characters who could do everything instead of just powerful men. So I think that's why this one is on my list of favorites and why I keep rereading it. Um, but now, like if you were a teenager looking to find powerful women in books, would be much, much easier than when I was like a early teenager. So this probably wouldn't stand up as like a great book for anyone else. This one's more of like a nostalgia personalized thing that I still reread this all the time and I still very very much enjoy the story. So it's not a bad book, um, but there you go. Next up we're getting into my Prim Loves Really Fucked Up Things category. <laughs> and. Uh, the next book on this list is Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Susan. Uh, I reread re this again this year as part of my Century Challenge, and this continues to be a very fucked up book. This is about women who work in showbiz, kind of. You've got a model actress, you've got a singer, like a stage actress, who goes into movies and then you've got a girl who starts out as a like secretary and then becomes like the face of a brand um, and it's the lives of these three women and the bullshit that they come like they deal with in New York and how all three of them eventually lean on dolls or pills to make it through their day. Um, they do uppers, downers, diet pills, like most of them are like speed. Like most of the pills that they do are speed and it's it just goes through like the bullshit of their lives, how they can't control their addiction to drugs and how they like are corrupted by like the it, it, I would say the Hollywood machine but they're all in New York and not Hollywood <laughs> but that general like showbiz machine and just the cruelty of the people around them who just want money instead of caring for each other um, this has a depressingly sad ending there's really nothing happy about this book and I think this is the book that really got me into enjoying like the it's sad throughout the entire book and then the ending is also sad. There's not a happy ending for sad people. Um, so this was this is what or this is what that does for me. And it's a really interesting story. If you could deal with like addiction and stuff like that, then I would recommend this this book. Um, very very good. I don't know why I said it was very very good. All of these books are very very good to me because they're my favorites and I'm an idiot. Um, the next one I have, it's old and it doesn't have a dust jacket. I should probably buy a new copy of this if I could find it because uh, this tells you nothing. Um, this is The Cleric Quintet by R.A. Salvatore. I'm going to go ahead and put this down and put up a picture right here so you can see what the cover looks like. This is actually a bind up of five novels but because I read it as a bind up I'm gonna just count this as one book. Um, this is a story that's introducing you to some Forgotten Realms characters written by R.A. Salvatore. The last Forgotten Realms book was written by Ed Greenwood. This is R.A. Salvatore. Um, R.A. Salvatore is known for Dritz is his main character, um, which is the dark elf ranger. I guess I should say Ed Greenwood is known for um, Elminster, who's a mage. So both of these books don't follow the main characters that the authors are known for. I didn't even realize that, but that's true. This takes place in like the overall R.A. Salvatore Dritz story. Like if you read all of Salvatore's Forgotten Realm books, like this has a place in it and the characters in this book definitely appear later on in Dritz's story, or some of them. Um, 
but not all of them. And this follows a cleric named Catterly and his it's it's a basic science or it's a basic fantasy story. It's kind of hard to like say what goes on again without spoiling it because like the action starts happening very very quickly. But this follows Catterly who is a priest um, the love of her, of his life is named, uh, Danica, I want to say. It's been a long time since I've read this. Yeah, Danica. I remembered her name. I'm so proud of me. Um, she is a monk. She's a very powerful monk. And then you have the Boulder Shoulder Brothers, who are dwarfs, if you couldn't tell by the name of Boulder Shoulder. You have Ivan, who is just a standard dwarf, and then his brother Pickle who wants to be a druid and Pickle is one of my all-time favorite characters because this is kind of spoilery but he actually manages to eventually be a druid and having a elf or having a dwarven druid is is everything but this is just a fun book there's there's no real sadness in here. There's no real surprise in here. It's just very formulaic with wonderful characters and this is kind of like a happy place type book. Like Shannara, this book will make an appearance in another one of my 12 Days After Christmas videos, so if you want to hear more about Forgotten Realms and specifically the Boulder Shoulder Brothers, then uh, make sure you watch the other videos. And that brings us to my favorite book of all time, which is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> so I hope no one's shocked that a Brandon Sanderson book is on here since he's my favorite author and I talk about him all the time, but Elantris is my favorite book. This is one of the two books that I would say is the starter books to the Cosmere. You either read Atlantis or Warbreaker. It would be the two books that I would say start with one of those two books if you're going to read Cosmere books. Um, most people like Warbreaker more than they like Atlantis, but I like Atlantis far more than I like Warbreaker. Warbreaker might actually be like one of my least favorite Sanderson books, and this is my favorite. Uh, I don't think Warbreaker or Atlantis is anybody's like absolute favorite other than mine. But this is a standalone novel for now. Sanderson says that he will eventually write a sequel to Atlantis, but not for a while. I also think this is his first book. And this is about a city named Atlantis where these magical beings have been ruling the country from for hundreds of years as far as we know for for a long long time and these magical beings can are normal people who transform overnight in a uh, like they just wake up in the morning and they were normal people and now they're magical beings and they go live in the city of Atlantis and they can basically do anything through use of like a library system that they have like they've got magical characters and that you draw the character in the air basically saying like this is what I want done and then it does it so they can create food from nothing they can heal any sickness they can do basically anything as long as they are in Atlantran and know exactly how to draw the characters right because if you draw the character wrong then and you're trying to heal somebody then you might kill them but it, it's an interesting magic system. But that's not what this book is about. What this book is about is 10 years prior to this book, something went wrong. And all of the Atlantrans lost their power and died. But they're not dead. They're, they're dead, but they're still alive. They're like zombies. And they don't need to eat, they don't need to sleep, but every single cut 
or mark or stub toe that they get never heals and the pain never fades. Uh, and if you can imagine like years and years and years of that, you're not eating so your stomach hurts but you don't need to eat, you're still alive. Every single stub toe you can feel, um, every single cut won't heal and you can feel it exactly like it happened in the first place. And they still live in Atlantis but they're locked in and abandoned by the general population. And that's what this book is about. Early, early, early on in the book, the um, prince of the capital city called K, um, his name is Rayodin. He wakes up one morning in Atlantran and gets thrown into Atlantris and then he kind of tries to lead the Atlantrans because they've been laying there doing nothing for 10 years being miserable and starving and so his like as a leader like he's a very very good leader and that's that's what he wants to do is like help heal the Atlantrans and or help organize and make their lives better and then he is not like to the country he has announced that he like died suddenly and he was engaged and his bride shows up just in time for his funeral <laughs> and then she has to figure out how to lead uh this country when she has no like experience with the country she's from a foreign country and upon hers or his death their marriage is considered valid so she is now the bride of or she's now like his wife even though they never ever officially met or got married just because he died while she was traveling waiting for the actual marriage and so she is the like a leader of this country but the country is led by merchants and is not doing very well um, I'm awful at explaining fantasy books, especially complicated fantasy books like Sanderson writes, but I love this if you, again, have not read any of the Cosmere series and you're looking to get into the Cosmere series, this and Warbreaker are the two places to start. I would read either Warbreaker then Atlantris or Atlantris then Warbreaker. Warbreaker right now ties in a whole lot more to the rest of the Cosmere, but Elantris does tie in to the other Cosmere books. So they're both very, very valid starting places that if you want to find all of the Easter eggs further on in the series, you need to read these two books. So that is a recommendation. And now we are going to move on to my books that will potentially become favorites of all time. I just need to reread them more or at all. I don't think I've reread any of these yet. So I need to reread them all and then figure out do I still really love these. But first, my battery's about to die, so I'm going to switch the battery out. Books that I have read in the past, I would say I've read all of these in the past 2 years that have potential to become favorite books. First up is A Woman is No Man by E. Rum. This is a book that I read for the Goodreads Challenge this year and I was so surprised at how good this is. This is a story of um, Middle Eastern immigrant women who live in New York and it's like a multi-generational book where all three women deal with a level of spousal abuse, um, some less extreme and some more extreme but they all have some sort of spousal abuse but they live in, and they live in the United States but they live in a very secluded community they're not supposed to go out of the house if they do go out of the house they have to go with somebody else and they can only go to like Muslim districts and they are raised by their parents to think that white people want to hate like hate them and want to kill them um and then other people in their community are not going to save them from their husbands they belong to their husbands they're the property of their husbands so it's how they deal with what they see as an, an inescapable situation 
um, of spousal abuse and all three women deal with it completely differently um, but it is a very very good story it's a very moving story and it touches on that idea where it's like oh I would never let anybody do that to me like I would leave them but sometimes escape isn't as easy as you think it is like maybe for you getting out of a situation like that is fairly easy. Like for me, I could just, if I had a boyfriend hit me, I would kick him out of my house. If he continued, I would call the police. And then if I had to escape, like if he owned the place that I was living in, then I could stay with either one of my parents and both of them would be just like, yes, please come stay with me however long you possibly need to. Like you have nothing to worry about as far as money or survival. But for these women, they don't have those options, and it's how they deal with the situation without any sort of options or support for escaping, because their families wouldn't support them in trying to leave their husbands either. So, very, very good book. I was surprised by it, but definitely could go on to my favorites of all time list eventually. Next up is a classic that I read this year, and it is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. This is one of the most dark, depressing things I've ever read, and it's a classic. <laughs> this is kind of like the same idea of Pride and Prejudice, except for <laughs> um, darker. But this is about... New York, apparently I like books in New York. This is about New York in the early 20th century and this woman, um, Lily Bart, wants, she comes from a wealthy family but has no money and like her parents blew all of her money and she knows that according to society what she should want is to get married a, to a very rich man and then live happily ever after to a man because he's got a lot of money and she keeps telling herself like like this is what she really wants is to marry a wealthy man and she's very good at flirting and what she does is she like hooks a guy that is wealthy and that she wants to marry and then screws it up at like the absolute last second right before he proposes to her and then she was like oops guess i'll have to find somebody else i didn't mean to do that my chances of marrying that particular rich man is ruined when really she wants love but the man that she loves is not wealthy he's like he could support her but he's not wealthy like she says she wants and it's just her struggle with becoming more and more destitute herself while he, she keeps saying she wants to marry a rich man and then being in love with a man who could definitely like take care of her and it's just her like mental battle with all of that and it's dark <laughs> this does not go well for lily <laughs> uh but yeah, I very, very much enjoyed this way more. Like I knew going into it that I thought I would like it, but I loved this book. So this definitely could end up on my favorite books of all time list. Next, the next two are controversial reads. They're the type of books where you either love them or absolutely hate them. And I was on the love train for both of them. The first one is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, and the complaints that I see about this is you have no fucking idea what's going on, and that there's no plot. And yes, that is true. <laughs> but I love it for that. <laughs> this is just beautiful, lyrical writing about this whimsical world that doesn't make sense to anybody, including the people who are living through it, but they're just happy. Like, they're happy in their whimsy. Um, so if you need a book with, like, really structured plot points, 
you're not gonna like this book. Um, this is, I, I wouldn't even say it's necessarily character driven, but if it's gotta be either plot driven or character driven, this is gonna lead way, way more towards character driven. Um, but it's just, it's driven by whimsy. It has no purpose whatsoever other than just like a whimsical tale of a place where every written word ends up, which is the, the library of the ports of the Starless Sea. And th that's all it is. It's whimsical. It's amazing. Erin Morgenstern's writing is beautiful. Um, but if you want a plot, you're, you're not getting it with this book. And I, I didn't need a plot. I love this. And I think it's going to be better on a second read through or a third or a fourth because a lot more things will make sense every time you read it. And the final book on the books that I think will make favorite books of all year is Gideon in the Ninth um, by Tamsin Muir. This is lesbian necromancers in space and it is part murder mystery, it is part science fiction, it is part fantasy. There's not really a love story in here and this is mostly, I mean it has a plot, but if you don't like Gideon as a character, you're not going to like this book at all. I think every person that I've seen who says they hate this book doesn't like Gideon as a character. And Gideon is very snarky, very sassy. She's not nice. Um, she just wants to swing around her big old broadsword, which yes, that is a euphemism for a giant dick. And look at titty magazines all day. Um, her entire goal in life is to join the military and kill people with a broadsword, but she is kind of trapped on this necromantic planet um, as property, I guess. She's not really sl a slave, it just seems like everybody on the planet is considered property, and she agrees to do um, this like task of bodyguarding Harrow on an adventure that happens in this book that Harrow needs to take um, for in, in exchange for her freedom. So that's basically what this is about is Gideon and Harrow go to the first house and Harrow has to do this like discover something to ascend and um, Gideon is there to bodyguard her and protect her because Harrow's assigned bodyguard is a worthless piece of shit. Um, but yeah, that's what this book is about. Wonderful. The second book in this series, which I don't know what I did with it. Oh, it's right here. Second book in the series, Harrow the Ninth. I hated this book, but I don't like Harrow as a character, and I love Gideon as a character. So that's definitely where the character-driven thing comes apart or comes in this story. Is you have to like the character to like the story. Um, so this is like five stars and could potentially become an all five all-time favorite. While this book is like three stars, and I was confused and I hated all of it. <laughs> well, obviously not everything since it's a three star and not like a one star, but comparatively speaking, that was a major jump down from this. I still think you should read both books in the series and I will definitely be reading the third book in the series. I just don't like Harrow as a character as much as I like Gideon. That, that's all there is to it. But those are my favorite books of all time plus runners or plus books in the running for favorite books of all time. Make sure you come back tomorrow for more of my 12 days after Christmas. I don't remember what video is going up so it's going to be a surprise for both of us and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!